You, you let me know when. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to General Assembly. I'm Dwayne Pender. I'm your speaker. Um, let's see, the phrase of the day, this has nothing to do with anything, but the Kelvin Smith Library is the best place to study on campus, okay? So make sure you say that and everything. All right, we'll move into attendance. Representative Bonsley. Representative, Representative Kerr. Representative, Representative Cummins. President Representative Vankovic. Representative Ennis. Present Representative Haas. Present Representative Hammond. Absent. Representative Hernandez. Absent. Representative Huey. Absent. Representative Kawashima. Absent. Representative McCabe. Absent. Representative Mulholland. Absent. Representative Wynn. Representative Weasical. Representative Baisley. Present Representative Cross. Present Representative Downey. Present Representative Caroline Hammond. Okay. Representative Lupton. Representative Caras. Representative Morgan. Representative Prelosky. Representative Via. Representative Wilkins. Representative Agrawal. Representative Atasholu. Representative Dewajandra. Representative Huang. Representative Knopfel. Representative Patel. Representative Shaw. Representative Thompson. Present Representative Zhang. Representative Chen. Representative Moore. Present Representative Weber. Present Representative Sanford. Present Representative Tyken. Parliamentarian Gardner. Speaker Pinder. Present. Treasurer Fike. Vice President Douglas. Present voting. Vice President Hassan Ali. Present voting. Vice President Hofert. Present voting. Vice President Patrick. Present voting. Vice President Zabinski. President Nikolic. Present Representative Wilkins. Representative Ahmad. Representative Wang. Representative Smith. Representative McCarthy. Representative Armstrong. Representative Sadid. 
Representative Katsafikas. Okay, uh, Representative Allen. Uh, any guess? This time we'll move into uh, committee reports. We'll start with President Nicklich. All right, hello everyone. Um, just a couple announcements this week. Um, first and foremost, we'll be announcing the, uh, the winners of the Student Life Improvement Grant tonight. And um, so I just ask you guys please to not look at that page in your agenda so it's more of a surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry to those of you who looked already, but you know, whatever. Um, we also have a visitor tonight, um, Karen Oy. Uh, she'll be talking about KSL and uh, the redesigned website. Um, we'll be hearing from her right after open forum tonight, as you can see in your agendas. Um, and also, uh, just um, a, a thing or two about the um, Student Sustainability Council. Um, together with the Student Sustainability Council, um, USG will be helping them uh, financially um, in their pursuit to make uh, Case Western Reserve University a more sustainable place and we'll be making um, the entire commencement ceremony of Case Western Reserve University in May um, carbon neutral so um, if Trevor would like to talk more about that uh, in open forum you're more than welcome to um, and lastly uh, USG elections are not very far off and you actually have to have your uh, letter of intent in before the next GA. So uh, I'd just like to encourage each of you here tonight to, uh, except for you graduating seniors or graduating junior, um, to submit a letter of intent um, because you all have been amazing USG representatives this year and um, amazing executive board members that are, you know, that have a possibility of returning. So um, please think about uh, and submit a letter of intent to run for USG next year. I'm open to points. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Hassanali. Okay, first things first. Uh, there is a change in my board report. Unfortunately, Margaret Carney has um, some personal issues uh, for Thursday night, so she'll be unable to come to our committee meeting this Thursday. However, we have rescheduled for April 9th which means we will have an actual committee meeting this week instead of just a presentation. Um, today I did meet with her and we went over um, the presentation that she is going to show us and some of the things we're going to be taking a look at are the Campus Center, what's been happening since um, for the last like year or so, um, the Uptown Project and the latest plans on that as well as the West Quad and some other futuristic happenings for Case, you know, years down the line. So it's going to be a great presentation. Um, once again, this has been rescheduled for April 9th, so I please, I highly encourage all of you to attend, even if you're not on my committee. Um, other than that, we have the Student Life Improvement Grant announcement today, so are there any questions? Focus groups went well last week, and uh, who went? Yay! What do you guys think about it? How about you, Karen? Thumbs up. All right, seriously, uh, next time we have the sign-up sheet, I encourage every single one of you to uh, attend. It, get, it is a great experience in figuring out what it really means to be a representative, and it's a great way to talk about USG. So um, other than that, I am open to points. All right, thank you. Thank you, Vice President Patrick. All right, guys, you already got 
this week's report last week. It was the supplement. It is the report for this week as well. Um, nothing's changed as far as mass funding goes. Uh, we have uh, probably the majority of the forms will be turned in tomorrow afternoon because a whole lot of groups request extensions. So uh, anyone who could, who's been in the USG office today or yesterday can attest that I'm living there um, probably until not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday after that. So um, if you are there and you want to stop by and help, uh, we have a finance committee has a lot of work to do. I'd like to thank uh, members uh, Colin Downey, Joe Recht, and Demetrius Katsiafikas for helping me out, but we need help from more of you. We've got a lot of information to enter, um, a lot of giant 6,000 line Excel spreadsheets to make. Um, I will actually be going over right after GA until nine o'clock. I will also be there tomorrow evening from uh, five o'clock to about 11 o'clock. So if you can stop by either of those times, especially tomorrow, especially on Wednesday, we're gonna need some help. So please, 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 please stop by. Open to points. No points, thanks guys. Thank you. Uh, Representative Cummins will be doing the board report for Vice President Sipinski. Um, most, most of it's in there. Um, obviously, we don't have a re resolution this week. Uh, we prefer quantity, quality over quantity in the Academic Affairs Committee. Um, also, I'd like to touch on the Teaching Excellence Awards. Um, we still need a lot of uh, submissions for um, the first year SAGES one and also the Outstanding Campus um, uh, Programming event. So um, definitely freshmen. Um, Talk to your constituents. Um, think about your first year um, sages, and um, if, if you have someone that you would like to um, recognize, go right ahead. Um, other than that, I mean, we have uh, a lot better than last year. For the extra mile, we have seven um, people that want to recognize a faculty member, and 12 for the engaging lecturer. So that's really exciting. Um, open points. Cool. Thank you. Vice President Douglas. Only a few things for me tonight. Uh, Relay for Life, our team is still uh, lacking. If we don't have 18 people on a team, that means that I have to walk for like six straight hours. So. Uh, <laughs> I know all of you are gonna come because Real Life for Life is that cool, so please, please sign up online. It literally takes like 15 seconds and I would demonstrate right now if I uh, had prepared that, but I can't, so see for yourselves. Uh, if you would like to get involved with any of our fundraising efforts, please come and talk to me after GA. Uh, the more people that help, the more we can do and the more we can raise and the faster we can kill cancer. Otherwise, uh, Jackie is going to talk about USG during or the videos during announcements, and I am open to points. In the interest of the number of guests we have, I'm going to save our representative spotlight for announcements as well. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Hofert. Okay, three things I want to discuss, and I'll make them as brief as possible. Um, first, Mat MATLAB. A couple people have sent me emails inquiring if we can get new licenses. Um, I'm looking into it right now. Um, printer care clarification from last week, calling the helpline does not send a tech to the printer. All it does is create a ticket. A ticket is what is used so they can keep track of how frequently something is breaking. If you want to get a tech to come, you need to look on the, it's the key operator. On the front of every printer, there's a tag kind of and it has the person's name and the number, and you want to call that. Um, since last week's GA, no tickets have been called in. So if printers are down, no one's been calling them in. And finally, an update on the print to here. Um, they're meeting with the final vendors next week, and a final decision should be coming within two weeks. I'm open to points. Um, so for if you're trying to call in, if a student is trying to call in a printer, they would call register a ticket for it? Or okay, so what, what would happen is when you call 368 help and you just say the printer's down and then a ticket gets generated, they keep track of those tickets. In order for a, a representative to come out to fix it, you have to call the key operator. But generally, that the key operator 
generally it takes a little while for them to come out and you don't want to swamp them with calls. So usually the Fribley and Leutner and the different staffs should know if one has been called and you shouldn't continue to call them. Are there any other points? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Parliamentarian Gardner is going to do a report from the Judicial Board. Really fast. First, Andrew Whitty, welcome back. Uh, second, uh, Judicial Board met yesterday. I uh, just talked about constitutional changes. Uh, the meeting lasted like two and a half hours, and that's only the first half of it. Um, so if you would like to come and talk to us, uh, we're probably going to meet again tomorrow. But that reminds me, hey, Jay Borg, can I talk to you after the meeting today? So we can discuss that possibility. Um, presently, there's nothing too extreme in any of the changes. So um, don't, don't think I'm about to assault you with something that's going to blow your mind. It's just a lot of little things. Um, but if you have anything big, you're running out of time to tell us about it. So that's where we stand. Any questions? OK. Thank you. Uh, moving to caucus reports now. Are there any caucus reports? Representative Pulaski. Any other caucus reports? The nursing caucus met. Um, our cupcake complaints um, campaign is over, and we received 107 surveys, which is really good for the nursing school. Um, we are including USNA um, in our suggestions, and we're currently working on making a list of suggestions for administration, and we do have a meeting tomorrow with Dean Lotus to talk about. Sounds good. Any other caucus reports? Okay, so now we'll move to open forum. Any points for open forum? Representative Downey. Um, it was brought to my attention by um, a student who was walking around, I guess it was two or three in the morning um, this past week. And she said that the only blue lights that are working, um, there's actually only a couple that have a light still working. Um, I don't know. She walked all around campus, I think, and she said only a couple were lit up. Um, can we get some of just to look around with those? OK. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, somebody brought up to me, I don't know if anyone knows of something that exists already, uh, but storage options for students in the summer, we used to have college boxes, and I don't believe we do. So I don't know if there's anything available that I could enlighten him about, or if maybe that's something we need to look into. Anything else? The fact that random noise comes out of most of them is not very confidence inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> is that something that the university is going to repair or not really? As uh, mentioned in previous years, there's a giant antenna, and the antenna likes to pick up radio frequencies from everywhere. So hopefully, you get to stand next to the one that makes music you like. I <laughs> can. <laughs> Can we bring back college boxes? I'll look into it. Thanks. I don't know anything about it. So. Um, about the college boxes, I was actually looking on the Kids Housing website, and there's supposed to be a link for it, but the link doesn't work. Just along the same lines, if we are already looking at the college boxes, I've heard it mentioned that students who are going to study abroad, um, we some universities do have the college box option for that for them, but our school does not specifically have that, so that might be something to look into. 
um, just related to college classes. Generally, there's a reason if private businesses disappear on the campus after only two years. I mean, I guess they're not going to come back for business reasons. But other options should be explored as well. I wasn't going to say anything because Miles pretty much summed it up, but I just remembered um, I got an additional email today that the sustainability office of case is going to pitch in a little bit more money. And so the entire commencement, and that includes undergrad at Beale, all the grad schools and all the locations and stuff, and food and hors d'oeuvres and setup and everything, will actually be carbon negative. I don't know if that exists, but that's just kind of one step further. Anything else? To our next speaker, uh, Ms. Karen Oy, so you can approach the podium. I have to say, I wish you could come and run our meetings. <laughs> they really move along, they're great. Um, and before I mention what I'm here for tonight, I'm curious why you made that comment. Um, it was great, by the way. I'm going to use it, you know, testimonial anonymous. Are you, are you referring to the phrase of the day? Yeah. Um, I have spent numerous hours in KSL, and it's very therapeutic. It's therapeutic. Yes. The way the, the furniture is arranged, lovely. I'm uh, serious. You mean like you can make it into something horizontal, or just that you can sit in groups, and mm -hmm. all, of the, all of the above? Exactly. Therapeutic for your mind, for your studies. For my mind, for my studies, and just a nice place to come and relax. That's fabulous. Library is place and space as well as content. And that's part of what my job as head of customer services is, to try to get a feel for what you feel about it so we can keep working to, to keep it that way mm -hmm. and to change it to keep it with the things you like. Um, and as I mentioned to Miles, my, here you go, you guys keep moving. Um, when I came in last year, those of you who were in the room, um, got a preview of our 24-7 survey that I did in late April and early May and had a, a whopping 700 or so people respond uh, without any iPods given away or anything else about 24-7. And due to family caregiving things, which will hit all of you at certain times of life and have certainly hit me, I didn't get here in the fall. But I have that study ready, and I asked Miles if we could do it Eh, towards one of your last meetings, um, because I used this group as curious to see whether or not you were a microcosm of what else went on with all those other 700 people. Uh, and of course, as soon as it hit Case Daily, I had to just back away from my computer because everybody pounded it. Um, interesting things. And, and a good survey usually asked one or two or three questions, and I snuck in a fourth at the bottom that said, tell me when you're here what you like. Furniture, placement, comments like it just clears my soul came in at the bottom. And those told me the stories of why you go there. And so I'm back again with yet an <laughs> with something similar. Um, and I hope, where, where did Jeff go? See, I lose you when I'm not seeing you. Um, OK, not here today. Yeah, the study break. I hope that went well for you. I was there when it started. It was everybody's bringing in carloads of stuff. And already people were gathering, so I think the way this started, I don't know, three, four, five years ago with Ryan Stark um, is now a tradition. So I've put my boss on alert. This is now a tradition, so it's a fun thing to do. Last January, um, we launched the new Kelvin Smith Library homepage, and that was after seven or eight months of focus groups with various people on campus, including people from this group that told us what they wanted a library page to be. And to our shock, one of the things they wanted was they didn't want a separate catalog page. They wanted to start searching on the library page, and they wanted things like they always wanted to know what the hours of the day were. They wanted quick links to certain things. And so we tried to give you all that. And after a little over a year, we're taking another, another look at it. We're not going to do a massive overhaul. Um, the time and money to do that sort of thing is enormous, as you must know. And libraries will never get a clean Google page. We have too much stuff, too many services, too many people. Um, but we're conducting a series of four lunch talks, and I've done lunch talks before. I invite you to lunch. It's a box lunch. I need 15, 16 people. Um, and so I talked with Miles about this. I want to do a group that starts with you or with people that you represent. If you feel on next Friday, not this week, but next Friday, 12, 15, 12, 30-ish, 12, 15, 17 of you can commit to come or to 
commit thinking tonight of who you might ask to come and represent the student body. This will be a box lunch for you. It's not just pizza and a can of pop, so we try to make it nice. We have a focus group leader. Um, it's really a talk. We did our first one today with the faculty guinea pigs. It was interesting. I'm on tape. I shouldn't say any more. Um, it's an opportunity for talk. Um, it, it's nice and relaxed. We'd like to know what you go to that page for. So did we, with the quick links down the left-hand side and the hours button on the top and the red-green light, how many of you know the red-green light? Yay. Faculty hate it. What's that for? Um, hate it, maybe too strong. Um, it's not going away. I, I will go to my desk before that goes away. Things like that that make it useful for you. Um, and I'm not going to say too much more because I'll, I'll you know, predispose your reactions if you, you're one of the 15, 16, 17 that come. But you want to know if those things were placed there that helped reduce some of your frustrations. Can you get to your library account quick? Can you find e-reserves? Um, instead of that, gee, I never knew we had that thing, if you read the blog once in a while. Um, we have brand new sustainability newsletters that we just bought, a whopping group of them. And that should show up in Case Daily any minute. Um, Things like that, that help you do your studies better, just keep you informed and able to discuss with anybody you meet about what you're doing at Case and the kinds of things you're reading. Um, so Miles suggested with me what kind of a date might work, and we came up with next Friday, not too late in the term. We didn't think anything was going on. We couldn't figure it out because the Case calendar doesn't work so well. Um, <laughs> but I'm not going to ask for a show of hands tonight. What I'm going to do is ask you to think about that. What do you? Questions are only in three basic categories. What do you come to that page for? We have the page broken in sections, function, content, some other stuff. Um, I was sitting here tonight, and of six major areas, four of them came from the students that are on our homepage. Now, there's obviously lots more than six things on there, but when you functions, what are the hours today? Am I connected to the network? How do I get a librarian? Where's my stuff? Where's my quick links? That kind of thing. Um, four of the six directly came from students. We want to see if it still works or if there's something else. We expect to find, as we did today, a little bit of word tweaking, like the red light, green light. Maybe we should, we should just say you're connected. Oops, you're not connected. So that everybody understands and it doesn't have to be labeled as something non-intuitive. How many of you have ever clicked on the button, if you can picture this upper right corner, it says Ask KSL. Do you know what that is? Yes, no? Nodding strong, okay, sort of. Uh, we might need to rename that one a little bit because faculty weren't sure what that meant. When you see an icon like that, do you click on it to find out more? Kind of mixed. We found that out today too. So we're looking for that sort of thing because those are actually not too difficult to fix. They make your library, your research level library work for you in a good way. So we expect you to give us some honest comments. We'll take thick or thin, good or bad and ugly. Um, we'll feed you. We'll make it better for you for next year and, and thereafter, and we'll keep doing these little tweaks. We've got faculty, we've got, we've done a faculty group, we're doing a staff group Friday. Uh, we're doing this group the week after, and we're doing graduate students when we can corral them and get them together, which is a lot tougher than you. Um, and then we're gonna publish it all. And when you come back in the fall, those of you that do, um, hopefully even by summer, you'll see some maybe cleaner stuff, a little less text. I don't know if we'll have more bullets or less bullets. That's, you know, you can't please everyone. Uh, but that's what I'm here for tonight, to invite you to a lunch talk, to, to, to maybe commit some of you in the room tonight, and those of you who know you can't, um, to think of someone that would be a good representative to contribute to what you all are doing day after day after day. And so when you graduate, you can say, I really know my way around databases and journals. Here's what I used all the time. That's what your employers, your future employers, whether they're other academic institutions or, or out in the corporate world are going to want to know. They know the kind of institution you're coming from. Um, they know the kind of things that institutions like us have, and they expect you to be able to use them. And if you can't start cleanly from the library page and use them and get them and get that experience, then that's um, something we don't want to be responsible for. We want to make it work really well for you. Any other questions? Yes. What time? What time on Friday? It starts at 12.30, there will be lunch, so if you can get there like 12.15 to kind of get it and settle in, that'd be good. It will not last more than an hour. We timed it today, and even with some interjections from us, we were supposed to be just taking notes in the background, but you know, sometimes you just can't stand it, so you have to interject a little bit. We had a good trial run with the faculty. This was the Faculty Senate Library Committee, by the way. Large group, the room was full. 
some good comments, and I expect different comments. This is part of the reason why you're so important. You've got different audiences. Faculty use a catalog and a library page very differently than you do. The graduate students will use it very differently than you do. So your voice is critical, just like it was on the 24-7 data that I collected last spring when President Snyder said, I'm not so sure, you know, tell me more about this. What is, how does it work? What is it important for? What does it cost? That kind of thing. So your voice is critical. Yes. Um, where in the library? It will be upstairs in the second floor. Is a room called the Dampier Room. We'll have signs all over the place. If you come out of the elevators and kind of head to your right, you'll run into signs that will lead you back. It's down a corridor you wouldn't normally find, unless you've been to special collections. And I know a lot of SAGE's instructors are taking their students to special collections to work with things. It's in that hallway. It's a big conference room, normally used for staff. Nice, huge, big black leather chairs. Comfortable, okay? I'll send a follow-up email to Miles, a reminder, uh, and I will ask for an RSVP because we will order in food. If you know already that you think you can come, Hit, go to the library homepage, library.case.edu. Go to the bottom. Fastest way to get me is to hit the contact us bottom in the middle of the bottom page. That's me. Okay, so if you already know, um, great. And then I'll confirm with you, and we'll see a good handful of you next Friday, I hope. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Um, move into new business, and we'll go into the uh, Student Life Improvement Grant announcement. All right. Um, well, good evening, everybody. Tonight, we're going to announce this year's Student Life Improvement Grant recipients. The process was longer than expected, but we wanted to ensure each and every one of the numerous proposals from students and the rest of the campus community were carefully examined and thoroughly evaluated. The proposals were chosen with great difficulty, but the proposals chosen tonight represent the heart of what this grant set out to achieve. They represent direct student body need, practicality, feasibility, and all in all are projects that will improve student life almost immediately. Um, so if you would please come up, all three of you. The first, pro the first project that we've selected to give uh, funding to is, was proposed by Lee, and um, she originally asked for $300 for two sets of board games. These board games would be put in one set in Wade and the other set in Fribley. Um, we actually decided as an exec board that this idea was so great, we'll double it. So uh, we've given her $600 um, to have uh, two sets of board games that would be check available for checkout for to students. Um, so we have lovely certificates. So here you go. Congratulations. Um, our second recipient today wanted chairs, not just any chairs, but really, really good chairs that every student could use uh, at Carleton Commons. Carlton Commons has been facing increasing uh, student need, um, and more groups are reserving it, holding more events there, and there just aren't enough chairs for everyone. Um, so not only have we decided to match his request at $6,000 for chairs and storage, but housing thought it was such a good idea, they would match us. So overall, we have, uh, have $12,000 to ensure that we have high quality chairs that will last a long period of time, have increased durability, and uh, for places for students to sit on, I guess. So anyway, uh, we'd like to give our second part of the grant to John Horton. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and lastly, uh, our final proposal was uh, probably where the, is where the majority of the funding for the grant um, was selected to go. Originally, Footlighters had sent a proposal for audio and lighting equipment. After reviewing their proposal, we realized that we could really um, give a lot to this, the audio equipment. There's, most student groups will give thousands of dollars of requests for mass funding for audio equipment to use at different student events. Um, so we have actually upped it from their $5,500 request to $7,000. The additional money would be used for more 
flexible and other audio equipment that other student organizations uh, could use. Um, they have agreed to create an extra officer position, create a calendar for students to check it out for them. They were, are going to be able to train and um, essentially keep this uh, equipment on behalf of USG and we would provide oversight for this entire process. So we'd like to, oh, and also there's going to be $500 in upkeep costs that are going to be directly put away and the remaining $900 we're leaving uh, for implementation costs in case something arises. Otherwise, we're going to put that money into the upkeep costs for the new equipment that are soon to be purchased. So um, our third uh, award goes to Footlighters for their audio equipment. Congratulations. <laughs> And that concludes this year's Student Life Improvement Grant. <laughs> huh? okay. okay. Vintry, if you would. Thank you. All right, at this time we'll move into our election commission report and we'll have Nicole Holford uh, report on that. Okay, um, in Appendix B, all the dates are outlined. All letters of intent are due Monday, March 30th by midnight, 11.59. There will be a mandatory candidates meeting on Thursday, April 2nd at 11.45 in the USG office. If you do not attend the meeting, you need to contact the Election Commission so that you can meet to sign the agreement. You will not be able to start campaigning until the agreement is signed. Um, campaigning will start at 1 o'clock right after the meeting, assuming you've signed all of the paperwork. And then voting will open at 8 a.m. on Thursday the 9th and run through Friday um, to 11.59 p.m. Um, the website, the front of the USG page now has information about the elections and you can go on and submit your letters of intent. Um, the Election Commission will have its first meeting, I believe it's going to be Thursday this week. Um, are there any questions? I'm open to points. Skyler? Yeah, um, we did have a few small glitches with the elections um, system, but they've all been taken care of. So, any other points? Okay. Thank you. At this time, we're moving to uh, USG Transition Task Force, and Derek Moore will report on that. That was a long walk. Okay, how's everybody doing today? Uh, like I'm, I'm working on the uh, USG Transition Task Force. Uh, if you haven't noticed, it is in Appendix C of your agenda. Uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at it. Uh, I guess my purpose uh, being here right now is kind of twofold. First, uh, I'm up for any suggestions if anything else that you may think should be added. And also to basically solicit your help. Uh, just kind of give you a brief summary of what it's about is this task force is basically charged with hoping to transition a lot of the things that are going on, a lot of the uh, processes that have been started, the uh, just different things the VPs may be working on or you may be working on in your caucuses, how to, how to best transition these things into next year. And this is very important just uh, taking into consideration that so many people are going to be leaving this year. So we definitely want to make sure we can help next year's GA get off to the best start. And a lot of this has to do with training and things like that. Uh, so as of right now, is there, are there any questions or anything I can clarify as to what the, uh, what the, for the task force is doing? Uh, that's another reason why I'm here. I'm currently on the task force. Like I said, I'm soliciting any, any help that, uh, that I can get basically with it. At some point, uh, I'm basically going to solicit everybody's help to some extent, but I'm definitely looking for more people who, who if, you know, this is a passion, something else that, you know, that you really want to be a part of, then I'm, I'm more than, you know, more than definitely looking for additional help. Are there any, any more questions? All 
Okay. Actually, a combination of both. Like I said, um, I'm going to end up, yeah, I'm going to be soliciting you for a survey, you know, some of the things that you think should be cared for, and I'm definitely going to be soliciting the VPs and Miles about issues that they think uh, that they may have been started this year and they don't believe are going to come to fruition now, but definitely should be cared for, and then probably the best method to continue with those. Are there any, any more questions? Uh, is there anybody as of right now that you know this is something that you may have a, a deep interest in? Uh, just remember, if you're looking kind of if you're looking to you know really leave your impact on GA, this is a good way to definitely uh, kind of leave your leave your mark. Patrick, yeah, was answering the question. Oh, okay, great. Okay. I don't know, just make sure it wasn't a question. Okay, uh, sounds good. If anybody, uh, if any additional change your mind, if this is something that you decide you may want to do, feel free to let me know. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is there any other new business? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into our advisor's report. In my haste to get here, and I apologize for being late, I left my hand out. So I'm going to defer the topic of recognizing burnout until next week. Other than that, I have no report. Thank you. Can we move to announcements? Is there any announcements? Representative Sanford. Like Bruce said, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about USG2. Um, anyone that's interested, we have our first script. If you're interested in helping film, edit, anything like that, just see me after GA for a real quick meeting. I promise it's not going to last longer than five minutes. You can time me. Representative Barbara. On behalf of um, Jillian Seaman, our USG reporter, want to invite you all to our Seven Deadly Sins party at the spot this Friday, 8.30 to 11.30, sponsored by Juniper, Cedar, and Mistletoe, and there's plenty of food and dancing, so please come. Representative Moore. Two things, uh, uh, two things. if anybody else is interested, uh, just feel free to let me know. I, I don't know my email address. In addition to that, if anybody here is possibly even maybe thinking about possibly considering doing a business degree in grad school, maybe an MBA, uh, you definitely would want to take advantage of the GMAT cut session that's coming up. It's going to be hosted by the National Black Media Association. Uh, myself, as well as Speaker Printer, both took part of the session, uh, the early session they had. It's a great session, it's a great prep session, kind of gives you a head start with what to expect. It's going to be free of charge. Uh, this, this is going to be a great opportunity. It's going to be on April 2nd from 6 to 9 in the Dive Building. Any other announcements? Representative Alfred. Um, writing's on the wall. It's coming up. Uh, please come out. It's uh, Wednesday to Friday. So. Location? Uh, it's between Mather House and the Church Covenant. Okay. Comment. Tomorrow is the deadline for applying for the Student Leadership Journey Council. And if you're interested in it, I have a flyer, which I'd be happy to give to you. Vice President Hassan My committee meeting will still be happening at 6, and Greek week practice is not an excuse to miss. That's right. <coughs> okay. Well, Vice President Douglas. All right, as promised, I have a uh, representative spotlight. If you can see my computer screen, you're not allowed to answer. <laughs> Our first one is uh, if she could have a superpower. And it's hard to believe that she would move any faster than she already does. It would be to have super speed so it wouldn't take long for me to get from class to class. Her favorite Cleveland hangout is anywhere the fun is. Uh, her biggest pet peeve is when people don't wash their hair because it's gross and yucky. <laughs> if she could go anywhere, she would go to Europe so that she could visit her friends. And her favorite statue is merging. I don't know what that is. Is there any hands yet? I can't see. Is it true? Is it Representative Haas? It is not. She is a freshman. She claims her favorite color is turquoise, but everything I've ever seen her own is pink. I don't know. Who, I don't know who got it. It was me. <laughs> I'll sort that out later. Our second one, if uh, well, her favorite candy is mint three musketeers, which I didn't even know existed. <laughs> she could have a superpower. 
All right, hold on for this one. Invisibility. Then I could help the CIA with spying, and I can create a force people to save a force field to save people from danger. Uh, I don't have a favorite dance move. I just love to dance. My favorite Cleveland hangout would be the third Smith third floor common room. Pet peeve when people do something totally opposite of what they're told. Indeed, it is. She's not. <laughs> Force field right now. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Come see me for a I will. Any other announcements? President Nicholas. Can I just get a show of hands of people who would be interested in doing the KSL lunch? No one on the finance committee can raise their hands. Everyone on this committee should be raising their hands. Okay. Um, this, uh, please respond to the email whenever um, you get it from me. I'm expecting to get uh, the email from the tonight. Um, so just look for it tomorrow. Uh, this is really important. So in the last two days that Brabbit and Wolstein has been open, 10 people have gone. Bon Appetit is talking about not offering the service anymore if we do not get students to go there. I think it's simply because a lot of people don't know that exists yet. So tell all your friends, whether they're in Matter, whether they're in the nursing school, whether or not they're even in Bingham, that they need to go and go, they need to go there and swipe and get their rabbit over there, or at least this week. Um, otherwise, I, I, re I think it would be a shame if we lost this great service just because people didn't really know about it yet. So please pressure your friends to go. <coughs> Okay. Vice President Patrick. Anybody that has free time, I will be in the USG office until about nine. I'll be doing my study stuff, so stop by and help out. Any other announcements? Vice President Douglas. Like to move to adjourn? Second. 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 Second.